What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are looking at the latest update to Mizuno's wildly popular Wave Rider. This is the Wave Rider 28. Look, I know this shoe isn't going to be for everyone, but there's a lot of people that just love the Wave Rider. And I have run in several iterations. And just right off the bat, this is my favorite Wave Rider yet for one key feature that they've added. Let's get into it. Let's get started with those disclosures. Mizuno was good enough to send me the Wave Rider 28 for the purpose of review. However, they haven't told me what to say. They don't have any editorial privileges and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. With that said, you can pick up a pair of the Wave Rider 28 for only $140. And of course, I'll place links in the show notes below in case you want to pick up a pair for yourself. So let's jump right into it. The Wave Rider 28 has 37 and a half in the heel, 25 and a half in the forefoot for a 12 millimeter drop. Now, admittedly, that drop is on the higher end of drops in running shoes, but especially if you are a heel striker, that 12 millimeter drop is going to feel pretty good under foot. Now before we get into the weight, the stack height of the Wave Rider 28 is half a millimeter less than the stack of the Wave Rider 27 last year. So with that in mind, Mizuno claims that a US men's size 9 would tip the scale at 9.7 ounces or 275 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13 tips the scale at 11.9 ounces or 336 grams. So the Wave Rider 28 is quite a bit lighter than the Wave Rider 27. It's 23 grams lighter in the sample size and 10 grams lighter in my size. So losing a little bit of weight is always a good thing when it comes to running shoes. And I don't think that that loss of half a millimeter of stack height made any noticeable difference. In fact, I know it didn't, or at least it wasn't noticeable to me. Now, the Mizuno Wave Rider 28 is made for those recovery runs, those easy runs, and ultimately it is a daily trainer, so this is going to be the shoe that you grab more than anything else. The shoe is a workhorse, and as I already said, I've run in several iterations of the Wave Rider. It just does what it does, and it does it well. So let's start at the top and work our way down. You can see this heel collar is fairly padded. There's quite a lot of padding in here, and that does contribute to a super nice stepping feel. The heel counter is extremely rigid, which if you've been looking at daily trainers and kind of grabbing on that heel counter, you'll know that's a very common thing. Because of this solid heel counter and all this padding, I didn't experience any heel slip, did have a good locked in feel. The Wave Rider 28 does have a removable insole, in case you want to take that out and replace it with something custom. And Mizuno has updated their jacquard mesh upper. It's lighter and more breathable. And look, it seems that companies say that their upper is lighter and more breathable every year, but in this instance, it's definitely true. I do have my pair of the Wave Rider 27 right here and although it's very difficult for you to see on camera when I just feel the front of both of these shoes I can tell that the Wave Rider 28 is much thinner and more breathable or maybe not thinner but it's smoother. I had the Project Zero colorway on the Wave Rider 27 and it's more like a knit finish. I actually don't know if it's the same for the regular colorways of the Wave Rider 27 but for what I've been working with the upper on the Wave Rider 28 is much lighter and much more breathable. Okay let's put this away for now. As far as overlays go there really aren't that many but at the same time there are a lot because if I hold it up you can see Mizuno has kind of covered this up are in like little PU tabs and they're kind of aligned in a sweeping motion to kind of give the perspective of speed. And we have an outline of Mizuno's running bird on the lateral and the medial side. Got a little overlay right here on the heel. And then we have a fairly substantial underlay coming around the toe box. That's just keeping that upper off your foot. We have little ringlets around each eyelet hole, just giving that support. So when you cinch the laces, it doesn't do any damage to the upper. The tongue does not have a lace loop, but it is gusseted on both sides. Now the tongue for a daily trainer is actually fairly thin. And if it's thin, it's fairly breathable, which is is always a good thing, especially if you're running in this shoe in the summertime. The tongue on the Wave Rider 28 is almost identical to the tongue on the Wave Rider 27. We do have that extra eyelet hole in case you wanted to do the heel lock, but again, it wasn't necessary for me. And then coming down to the midsole, Mizuno is now using a dual density midsole setup. Now, for the most part, they're still using their Mizuno Energy Foam, which works, it's very resilient, it's fairly good energy return. I mean, this is a daily trainer, so we're not going to expect like top tier stuff. But what they've added this year on the Wave Rider 28 is from here all the way back, and you can see it because there is the wave plate. Maybe it's easy easier on this side. Yeah, it's easier to see the wave plate. The wave plate comes to about the midfoot and it comes back to the heel. And beneath the wave plate, we're using Mizuno's new Energy Next foam. Now that's the same foam that they used in their new Neo Vista. And that foam is absolutely phenomenal. It's fun to run in. Now, of course, you don't get a whole setup on the Wave Rider 28. I think maybe Mizuno is keeping that foam for their slightly more premium shoes, like the Neo Vista, like the new Wave Sky. But where they've added it here in the heel, I found it to be pretty useful. And here's why. Now, this is a daily trainer. So it is made for those, again, Again, recovery, easy miles. And if you are a heel striker, you are especially going to be heel striking when you're running easy. Now with this energy next foam on the heel, you are getting a very plush touchdown. Now if you are a midfoot or a forefoot striker, in all reality, you are probably not going to be buying the Wave Rider 28. But if you did, you'd probably be missing that softness and responsiveness that comes with the energy next foam. And I say a midfoot and forefoot runner probably wouldn't be buying the Wave Rider 28. And that's because of the drop. Generally, a higher drop is going to suit heel strikers better than midfoot to forefoot striker. But just to give you an idea of the density 
density between the Mizuno Energy and the Energy Next. I do have a durometer right here. So let's first try the Energy and let me take it in a couple of different spaces. It's almost difficult to get a good reading because Mizuno has added this wave pattern to the midsole, but I think I can manage. We're looking at about 32 at the base for the Energy foam and then for the Energy Next, oh, 20. You try again on the heel. Yeah, 22, 20, 20. So the Energy foam is quite a bit firmer than the Energy Next, which I didn't really need a number to tell me that. I could feel it immediately. And this is actually the reason that the Wave Rider 28 is my favorite Wave Rider yet. Because remember this, we did have the Wave Rider 27. In the Wave Rider 27, we had all Mizuno Energy Foam, even here in the heel. Now, if I hold these both up, you can see that the plate placement is about the same. The only difference is, is the Energy Next in the 28. And that makes all the difference. I actually found the Wave Rider 27 to be a little too firm for my taste, especially on those easy runs when I'm looking for a little softer ride. I tend to tolerate a firmer shoe when I'm running a little faster, but for those daily miles. I just want my body to feel good. I want running to feel a little easier and having that softer foam in the heel really does it for me. Now I did take this shoe out of the box. I ran 15 miles in it, did a couple other shorter runs and I did take it out for some 400 meter intervals, which is not usual for me. This was the shoe that I wanted to run in when I had the interval scheduled. So I figured why not? Guys, I got to tell you, the Wave Rider 28 actually performed okay running the intervals. I didn't expect much from it. And mainly that's because usually when I'm running intervals or I'm running at a faster pace, I'm going to choose a lighter race day or up tempo training shoe. Something like the Mizuno Neo Vista. But I was pleasantly surprised how the Wave Rider 28 felt once I started picking up the pace. And if I put it together in my head, I know that when I'm running faster, I do tend to strike more midfoot. So I was landing more on the energy foam, which because it's a little firmer, is going to give me a little more road feel. It's still super protective, but that slightly firmer foam when I was utilizing it more when I'm running fast, that also felt pretty good. Now, just back quickly to the wave plate. That wave plate only extends from the heel to about midfoot. So its main purpose is to provide stability and it disperses is that impact over an entire platform rather than where we usually land on our lateral heel. Okay, so speaking of landing on the lateral heel, let's come down to the outsole. You can see we have a lot of X10 outsole rubber. The wear, as I would expect from any Mizuno shoe, is phenomenal. It's not even noticeable at all up on my forefoot. And surprisingly, I can't really see anything here on the heel either. I mean, there is a little bit of grazing on the outside of the tread, but there is actually a lot of outsole rubber back here. I think the outsole rubber on the lateral heel is slightly thicker than even up on the forefoot. Got this flex groove cutting the outsole and then we have a big cutout starting right at the midfoot and then coming down and exiting on the medial heel. So all in all I was actually pretty impressed with the Mizuno Wave Rider 28 more so than I expected to be. You know sometimes when I get a daily trainer in it can be a little bit of a chore just because a lot of daily trainers are very similar. They're about the same weight. They're mainly used for running easy but I found that this Mizuno Energy Next in the heel changed the entire shoe for me. So with that in mind if you are thinking of shopping for a Wave Rider I would recommend going for the Wave Rider 28 and not getting the Wave Rider 27 which has already been discounted. I mean, you're going to save a little money by getting the Wave Rider 27, but I think this addition of the Energy Next foam in the heel, I think that's too big to pass up. So now it's your turn. I want to hear from you. Have you ever run in one of Mizuno's Wave Riders? If you have, let me know which model you've run in and if you're thinking of picking up a pair of the Wave Rider 28. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my review of Mizuno's Wave Rider 28. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.